So hello everyone. Today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Devansh with us. So Devansh, would you like to introduce yourself once? So hello everybody. I am Devansh. I am a sixth semester student at BIT Mesra Rachi, and I am from Kanpur. And I am currently doing my majors in electronics and communication engineering. Yeah, and Devansh also has recently cracked the Microsoft internship. So he'll be telling us a lot of tips about how someone can crack an internship when I when they're in their second year or third year. Also, we'll get to know his journey. So tell us everything, Devansh. How was your journey of cracking a Microsoft internship while still in college? So it basically all began with the uh, enthusiasm of development, machine learning, mm-hmm. and when I got into college, uh, all the seniors were just talking about DS, DS, CP, DS, CP. <laughs> Nobody yeah. was talking about development. The, Nobody was talking about the majors. The yeah. people who are in civil, they are also talking about DSA. People <laughs> who are in ceramics are also talking about DSA. Yeah. So I uh, thought that I should give it a try. Ki, let's see. Okay, what is this? So mm-hmm. I dived into DSA. I really found that it is really insightful and it is a tool that everybody should know. Like yeah. not just engineers, but every single person should have a grasp of data structures and algorithms to implement anything they want. Mm-hmm. So this is how uh, my interest began, and later I slowly switched my field from development into machine learning development. Okay. So I, you can properly refer me as uh, an AI ML developer rather than than a software development engineer. Mm-hmm. That is pretty much about it. Okay. So how did the interview experience go? What all was there in the interview that they had with you? See, Microsoft has a reputation for taking three, four, five rounds of interviews. But uh, in certain cases, if they're satisfied, they're satisfied with two rounds. Mm-hmm. If they're not satisfied, then they'll take you till four, five, six. So uh, for my case, I had just two rounds. One was completely a technical round, okay. and the other was a blend of technical and HR round. In my first round, uh, I was bombed upon with some questions regarding the basics, fundamentals of computer science, mm-hmm. and um, surprisingly, he asked me certain questions about electronics as well. Okay. <laughs> And um, the person who took my interview was an electronics engineer himself, so oh, he was pretty why. glad that I made it to the interview. Yeah. And um, then he shared me a coding question link, mm-hmm. and I would say that the difficulty of that question was somewhat fourteen hundred around code forces if okay. I compare it to CF, so somewhat around fourteen hundred. So it was a decent question. It was not like uh, pretty easy, but yeah, uh, if you have good grasp on dynamic programming, oh, and it you was have a good DP grasp. Problem. Yeah, and if you have good grasp on trees, mm-hmm. then you can do it. So uh, I would suggest that trees, grass, and DP. These three are the most important tools if you are going to sit for an interview. Recursion, trees, graph, and DP. Mm-hmm. They are yeah. the most important tools. Like have to have arrows in your quiver. If you don't lack these arrows, then you cannot mm-hmm. hit the target. And in my HR round, it was it was more about myself. And uh, how did I get time? Actually, I did a lot of virtual internships while I was in my uh, summer break during the second year. So he inquired a lot about that. That how did I make time for all of that? Like how could I multitask between yeah. so many companies, <laughs> switch over and over? So they were impressed by that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, there's this, this platform called Forage. Okay. So what Forage does it? Does is what it does. It takes uh, companies' questions, like the problem statements, and it acts as a mediator between the company and the, uh, I mean the cl- the person who will be developing. So there's a problem statement, and you have a time period like of one week, a fortnight, oh. or a month, and then you have to solve that problem. Uh, basically, it is related to the bottlenecking issues or uh, change the implementation so that the bottleneck gets removed. So I did that for Goldman Sachs and. Uh, Accenture, and to be honest, it's so damn simple. Mm. All the solutions are already on the internet. So if somebody is lacking certain internships and work experience, I would suggest you to go to www.4h.com, and you just do that. You'll get authorized certificates for that. And if a person does not know what 4h is, then he won't be able to recognize whether it's a virtual internship <laughs> or it was a real hands-on yeah. experience. I'm not <laughs> suggesting to do that, but yeah. It, <laughs> You were in the worst case situation, then yeah. rather go for it. If you, it's better than having nothing, right? Than having nothing exactly, in your resume. Exactly. It's better than going with an empty resume. So while still on the topic of resume and development, you know, I noticed that you took the like a like a different path than what many people do. They just stuck, like jump straight into full stack and all. 
but you had taken a different path going into AIA level. So what motivated you to you know go into this other route? Yeah. As I told you, um, getting into college in second semester, everybody was already doing DSA. Like mm-hmm. uh, many of my batchmates, they were already twelve hundred, thirteen hundred on code forces, <laughs> and I was very late to all that stuff. Yeah. So what I did was I started doing it because everybody was doing it. But slowly I thought that this is looking like a rat race, mm-hmm. and if I have to uh, develop myself like an individual ent- uh, entity, then I have to do something different. Mm-hmm. Because if everybody is doing the same thing. and everybody is going to give the same interview how will they filter you out mm-hmm. so it is necessary to have at least one different skill that makes you stand out of everybody else so uh, i inquired some of my professors i inquired some cse professors like that what are the trending technologies so the i got two answers one was blockchain technology and one was image processing mm-hmm. people told me that image processing has endless use cases yeah. and blockchain also has endless use cases electronic voting system uh, e ballot system all of that goes to blockchain uh, biomedical image processing image watermarking all of that goes under image processing so what i found reasonable was image processing because uh, that somewhat correlates with electronics because we also have the machine learning and all of that in our syllabus as well so i slowly began learning uh, via the free stanford courses on uh, youtube like there's this called uh, course by andrew ng which is very popular so it gives you so the way he taught that actually uh, grew my interest in the subject like it was not uh, something like uh, somebody on the screen and just teaching you how to code import this import that not like that he gave me the gist of the subject like why does it work like that yeah. most people who do ml don't know what's going on the back <laughs> they have no idea what's <laughs> going so on the back that's so true that's so true how the weights are getting updated what is the real processing that's happening on the back end if you know that that will what that is really what will take you deep into the subject mm. so this is how i do my interest in ml and dl and slowly into image processing mm. no that makes sense the thing like you said right if everyone is doing full stack it comes to a point where there is a saturation of full stack engineers and especially as a fresher you have the option of going into different fields right because you're not someone who's going for experience role you're a fresher and it's okay if fresher has different technology especially if you have something which is unique to people or other people are not touching it they will have more options apart from that you have dsa which you can use you know and that your problem solving skills so let's say to the people who are watching this video you know to the like hopeful third year second years who are watching this and they also want to crack a company like microsoft or google goldman sachs these kind of pvcs you know for internship what advice would you give ki how can they come to that level Mm, I would suggest three things. Okay. The first thing is skill development. Skill development can be uh, of two types. Like you can either dive down into competitive programming. Mm-hmm. If you are a competitive programmer and you are a wonderful competitive programmer, then you need nothing. <laughs> If you are just a wonderful competitive programmer and you yeah. have, then big tech you can easily crack. Big tech companies yeah. like Google and all you can easily crack on that basis alone. all they want is sheer sheer iq mm, if you have so sheer iq sure. exactly because they when you are dealing with uh, a population like 7 billion google has more than 2 billion users mm. so uh, when you have so many users then the problems are also exponential yeah, true. and for exponential problems you need exponential mindsets mm. so uh, one option is completely into cp secondly if you don't find that very interesting mm-hmm. then i would suggest you to go for development because yeah. if everybody will do the problem solving then who will create the <laughs> things projects yeah exactly so you can choose one of two paths either you can go for web development or you can go for machine learning mm-hmm. Bo- if you do both that is that is the best blend sweetest blend mm-hmm. ever the perfect ratio you have to find out your niche so basically you need to find your niche uh, a subject that does not feel like a burden a topic mm-hmm. that does not make you bored it does not make you feel sluggish like when you're doing it you're feeling like yeah i have something to do i have to complete this i have to do that something that excites mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. if you feel like like uh, if i create something it will su- regularize something which has been going on for ages if you create something with blockchain it will make people's life easier yeah. if you Make something with image processing that makes doctors' life easier. Then I guess that will be way better. And uh, this is the first thing, the skills. Mm-hmm. Second is your communication. Yeah. This is where the main problem occurs. See, in college we are not taught a single C <laughs> about communication. 
yeah. there's this course called cs in every college communication skills 1 and 2 i believe so, that skills. every college has that com skills course but it is absolutely bullshit nobody pays attention to it and to be honest it is not worth paying attention to as well so what i would suggest is that uh, people should develop their communication skills because even if you are a very good programmer you have very good skills if you cannot portray mm-hmm. them if you cannot sell yourself to the interviewer mm-hmm. then you're a fool to them yeah. if you cannot tell how good you are then how good are you mm-hmm. exactly so i guess communication skills are very important and the last thing is networking resume and a very good linkedin profile mm-hmm. these are the three pillars of basically cracking any company intern full time whatever you are aiming for a very good skill accompanied with something which makes you different communication skills and a very well crafted resume and a very good network of uh, highly resourceful people on linkedin this is what's needed okay awesome so in your resume speaking about your resume what would you say you know were a couple of things that made it stand out compared to the other resumes that microsoft got uh basically what i suggest microsoft would have got from a bunch of students from my college would be web development clone <laughs> to do list basic portfolio yeah. website so this is what would be, what would have Maybe reiterated in yeah. almost uh, 50 or 60 resumes then a few people would have made complex web development projects which would definitely have had been interesting basically what stood out for me was uh, my project analysis mm-hmm. what i had done was i had made two projects based on machine learning deep learning and image processing okay one was uh, a dental ocd scanner what ocd means is that uh, you can scan a denture image and you can detect a person's age and gender so what happens is mm-hmm. when our uh, crpf jawans when their convoy is blasted mm-hmm. and even their remains are not found at least mm-hmm. the denture remains intact because an ml is very yeah. hard so on the basis of that people can uh, like make a guess mm-hmm. about their age or their gender so uh, correlations can be created somehow mm-hmm. so that is one thing and it can also be helped in the post mortem cases and it can also assist the post mortem doctors and uh, similarly in the case of healthcare mm-hmm. there was one more project that yeah. is the cataract image detection so uh, in india around there are 23 to 25 million cases of cataract every year mm-hmm. because uh, once we progress in our ages once we are past 50 cataract becomes like a daily hobo mm. cataract is basically the cloudiness of the islands and in uh, good cities and metro cities that's not an issue because as soon as people will find them their vision getting insignificant they'll visit an ophthalmologist but in small towns that is a very big deal so in my project what you can simply do is you can take a 7 8000 rupee smartphone you can click an image of the eye my algorithm will process the image it will tell you whether you have cataract what stage it is in and what is the treatment you can procure so that you can protect your vision from any further deterioration so that was what stood out they asked me repetitive questions regarding chat gpt as well that was what uh, i found a little exciting because microsoft has developed bing chat yeah. which is basically a competitor of chat gpt yeah. so he did not ask me anything about bing chat but he asked me about chat gpt precisely he asked me the full form of gpt and then the entire architecture of it so make sure that everything you write in your resume yeah. is as bold as it is written it is as bold inside your brain yeah. it should be like um, on your tips like you should not fumble while telling yeah. what you've written resume because if you think a lot they'll get to know because they are profound people <laughs> they, are, they have an idea for 10 to 15 years no fresher will take your interview ever <laughs> for the take your interview will be the barb of his field hmm. so be very clear be honest in your resume and secondly what i would suggest is don't brag about things that are of very low value hmm. don't brag <clears throat> about school olympiads don't brag about uh, school awards don't brag about sports championships they have nothing to care about your sports yeah. championship all they require is a very very altered very very centered resume which is very specific as soon as the person reads it he gets a grasp at your cgpa right after the cgpa he gets a grasp at your uh, projects and right after that he gets a grasp of your work experience mm-hmm. only these three things are needed so that mm-hmm. is how i think you can craft a very apt resume and also while crafting a resume you should look 
what the role is requiring mm-hmm. and you should inculcate those words in your resume because when it will go through the ats it will scan those words uh, precisely and then you have a better chance of getting shortlisted yeah and one more point i would like to put emphasis on like what he said he had made some projects which were of real life value you know majority of the companies the resume the type of resume they get is just clones of you know things that are already existing people will make facebook clone youtube clone max to max people will make you know even if they are making complex things you'll see it's not having that much use in real life but the time that you make a project which has a real life value like the ones that he had mentioned that is a one great way for you to stand out you know because they are looking for problem solvers and if you're someone who's solved a real life problem using a project i believe that will really help you stand out right exactly yeah so i guess that covers pretty much everything about how you know you can get a internship in a product based company so thanks a lot devan for coming on my channel and sharing your journey and these valuable tips with me and my subscribers and one more thing guys as he has mentioned that he is very good in ai ml he had made a lot of projects so we'll probably have a ai ml road map coming soon from him so be tuned Definitely. for that so again devan thank you so much thank you so much for having me